all about small filling lines with Jason Barrett at Black Button Distilling. We're on the road for Blackbird TV. Jason, you are the man. Thank you, David. That's very kind of you. Jason's got a Crivella, a custom uh, bottling line here. And Jason's going to tell us all about this. It came in in 2014? 2016. 2016. Yep. Tell us about your filling line. Yeah. So before that, we had been using totally manual equipment. And as our volume started to grow, that was no longer possible. We unfortunately are in a very confined urban location, so the line had to be custom built for our size. So what's, a, what, what's the footprint here? Like we're in feet? 16 by 14. 16 by 14. So very tight, um, but we're able to do a thousand bottles an hour across these couple of pieces of equipment. And I'll walk you through what we've got and uh, and then what I would look for if I was on the purchasing side of something like Let's this. Let's go, man. Tell me so about it. So we've got a manual infeed here that's then going to go to our eight head filler and our single head capper. One of the key things, though, that this machine, though, was set up to do liqueurs. Liqueurs are heavy. They're thick. They've got sugar in them. Without the uh, vacuum pump that's behind this unit, it can only do straight liquor, bourbon, vodka, gin. So by adding that vacuum pump, the range of things it can do increases substantially. As it comes out of the T-corker, we've got a uh, cork sensor. We then have our accumulating table because the filling machine and the labeler don't quite uh, line up speed wise. So sometimes we need to accumulate a few bottles in between. This is a CDA labeler, an R1000 from CDA France. The original labeler was brought over the, the base unit in 2014. And then the top components that add like the heat shrink and everything uh, were added uh, in 2016 when the rest of the line was put in. And it cranks. Thousand bottles an hour, no problem. Uh, sometimes we even can overclock that to about 1200 if we've got a good crew just moving things on and off. I'm an appraiser. I come into this place. The bank sends me in and yep. tells me, David, you got to write this thing up. What's really important for the description of this system from your perspective as a user? You, you've yep. been using this for a long time now. Yep. How do I best describe this system as a system? Talk me through that. So the key things that I think they've got to be brought up is that vacuum filler that, again, allows it to do not only straight whiskey, but liqueurs. The sizing of the filling heads, this will do 375s liters and 750s, but won't do mags or 50 mLs. Okay. The fact that it's a T-corker, not an ROPP top. Talk to me. A T-cork is the, a yep. regular cork. Yep. Goes in. Little plastic cork that yep. gets put in uh, almost like a wine cork with a top on it. Okay. What was the other thing you the said? The other thing is an ROPP. It's a screw roll on. on. Yep. Roll on uh, polyplastic. Um, which is how they do sort of more cost effective, mm -hmm. lower end vodka and things of that nature. That's going to be one of your key things because brands usually aren't willing to change that. They use one or the other. The cap sensor is a nice add on, but not a gotta have. Many people might even take the accumulator table off depending on their size requirements. But then as you get to the R1000, the fact that it not only has two labeling stations, it can do clear labels. It's got a print head right on the unit as well as the ability to automatically put the heat shrink over that T-cork and seal it all at a thousand bottles an hour makes it a really unique machine. And, if I and, was, and it's not that big. It's really not. It doesn't take up a lot of room. These are very compact machines. We paid a little extra for that, uh, that I don't, again, if you had more sizing, you might not get that value out as an appraiser. Uh, but if you had somebody that had a unique space and oftentimes wineries are very small, it can add a lot of value. The other key things that I would want to know, the fact that we have all the manuals, the fact that the companies that made them are still in business, and the fact that there's direct contacts for support. Because any of this type of automation, whenever you bring it over to your distillery, you're going to need, maybe it's different uh, spin wheels, maybe it's a slightly different cap cup, like you're going to need a couple of modification points. And if the companies that made these pieces of equipment are either gone or not well, you know, not already established, to me, that takes a huge discount on the equipment. But when you can actually right there, hand them a packet and say, here's the instructions and here's who to call if you need maintenance. To me, that makes it much more valuable as a buyer. So our customers are banks typically, and, and they want to know what's this worth? If, if we have a problem and we have to take our collateral back, what's, what's this going to be worth? Those are the questions that we're asking as the appraiser. Yep. So you're also the consumer. You're going to come in and buy this system now. What else are you going to look at to establish your price point for how much you're going to pay for it? I mean, a lot of it is, is just assessing that general condition. Does it look like it's been well maintained? Does it look like it's been well cared for? Are there spare parts on hand which imply the facility had a, uh, a maintenance schedule and a maintenance plan 
or is it really just the raw machine? A lot of it also I think is going to come down to timing. If folks need to install a piece of equipment before a harvest or before a major program, I think 75 cents on the dollar is not crazy. But if it's going to languish a little bit, you'll be lucky to get 50 cents on the dollar. My crystal ball is broken and it's really difficult to time those markets. So we try to come out with a more a more stable value depending yes. on the definition that we're using. And the bank never knows if they need or when they need to. And hopefully they don't ever need to come back and take this stuff back. Yep. But when they do, we want to be as accurate as possible. Having an end consumer's perspective on what's important into the value and how much weight we put into those things relative to what we're inspecting is really helpful. Jason, I can't thank you enough. Thanks for having me.